4.3 Graphs of the Tangent and Cotangent Functions To graph the tangent functions, we can look at the values of tangent on the unit circle. This chart has all the values between um, pi over 3 and negative pi over 3. We're going to focus on these values here, 0, pi over 4, or negative pi over 4, and positive pi over 4. So if you'll remember, tangent is the value of tangent is y over x. So on those points, at 0, my y value, or sine, is 0. So 0 over anything is 0. So on our tangent graph, that's where we're going to have our point at 0, the value of tangent is 0. And then at pi over 4, tangent or, or sine is the square root of 2 over 2. Cosine is also the square root of 2 over 2. So square root of 2 over 2 over the square root of 2 over 2 is 1. And that is where our um, pi over 4, that's the mark where pi over 4 would be on our tangent graph. So we have 0 and we have positive pi over 4. And then at negative pi over 4, um, we have negative 1 because its sine is uh, positive in the second quadrant. Cosine is negative in the second quadrant. So again, we have square root of 2 over 2 over negative square root of 2 over 2, which is negative 1. And so at negative pi over 4, we have negative 1 for our value. Now these dashed lines that we see on the graph those are called asymptotes. Our asymptotes, or if you'll remember, asymptotes are lines on a graph that um, your graph gets close to, but it doesn't cross it and it doesn't touch it. So it gets really, really close to those borders, but they don't cross and they don't touch. So that's what these marks are on the graph of tangent. And the reason why we have asymptotes there is because those are places where our graph is undefined. If you'll remember, at pi over 2, that's where cosine is 0. And since cosine is our x value, that means we would have a 0 in the denominator. So that's why we have asymptotes there is because it's undefined at those points. And that's at, at negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2 because we would have um, zeros in the denominators. So our graph gets really close to those points, but it doesn't cross it. So let's graph the tangent function. I'm going to plot our points on the graph. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do on the graph is I'm going to put the asymptotes in place. And like I said, uh, tangent is going to have asymptotes everywhere that cosine is 0, because that would cause a 0 to be in the denominator. Well, cosine is 0 at pi over 2, so I'm going to put an asymptote here, and at 3 pi over 2, and also at negative pi over 2, and at negative 3 pi over 2. And then Tangent is going to be 0 every place that sine is 0. Well, sine is 0 at 0. It's 0 at pi, at 2 pi, negative pi, negative 2 pi. All right, and then at pi over 4, that's where we have the square root of 2 over 2 over square root of 2 over 2, so that's 1. So at pi over 4, we have a positive 1, and we have an negative 1 at negative pi over 4. And then our graphs get really close to the asymptotes, but they don't touch them. All right, so that is what one period of the tangent function, the tangent function looks like. So it repeats um, at all of these places. All right, and again, we have to make sure that we draw arrows um, because it's continuous in the range. 
All right, I think that's enough. All right, so that's what our parent function for tangent looks like. Now, these are some facts or basic facts about the tangent wave or curve. Unlike sine and cosine, the graph is discontinuous. It's discontinuous at values of x in the form of 2n plus 1 times pi over 2. So at, so every, or, or it's discontinuous in increments of pi. And it's symmetric with respect to the origin, so it's an odd function. Again, that means if we were to rotate it on the origin 180 degrees, it would look the same. So if you were to flip your paper upside down, it would look the same. That's an odd function. The x-intercepts or the roots are at multiples of 180 or pi. And unlike sine and cosine, the period is 180 degrees or pi. If you'll remember, sine and cosine have a period of 2 pi or 360 degrees. So the domain is x such that x is not 2n plus 1 pi times pi over 2. So th those points are excluded from the domain. And the range is from negative infinity to positive infinity. All right, now let's look at the graph of cotangent. So cotangent is the reciprocal function of tangent, and instead of being y over x, it's x over y. So that means that cotangent is going to have asymptotes everywhere that sine is zero. So I'm going to put in the asymptotes and I'm going to mark up our graph. Okay, I've marked up our graph with the asymptotes. Um, the asymptotes, again, happen every place that sine is zero because in this case, we know cotangent is the same as, or let me it'd be cotangent of the theta or cotangent of x is, let me write it as theta because that's confusing because there's another x. Okay, so cotangent of theta is uh, x over y. So every place that y or sine is zero, cotangent is undefined. So co sine is zero at zero, at pi, and at two pi, and of course also the negative values. So that's where we have asymptotes. Then our every place that x is zero or cosine is zero, then cotangent is also going to be zero. So we have at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2, we know that cosine is 0. So that means cotangent is also 0. And then pi over 4, we're going to have a, our positive values. That's in the first quadrant. So that we know, so we know that square root of 2 over 2 over square root of 2 over 2, both of those are positive. So we get a positive 1 at pi over 4. But then 3 pi over 4, that's in the second quadrant. So we're going to have one positive and one negative value, so that's going to give me a negative one at that point. All right, so then if we connect our graphs, and again, our asymptotes, our, our graph gets close to it, but it doesn't cross it. That's what the cotangent graph looks like, and it's going to repeat and do the same thing um, for every period. Now, um, if you'll notice, not only are the values or are the asymptotes different between tangent and cotangent, but in our tangent graph, our lines in our graph were rising from left to right. For the cotangent graph, these lines are falling from left to right. So some basic facts about the cotangent wave. The, the graph is discontinuous at values of x in the form x is equal to n times pi, and it has vertical asymptotes at these values. The graph is symmetric with respect to the origin, so it's called an odd function. The x-intercepts are multiples of 2n plus 1 times pi over 2, and the period is 180 degrees or pi. So the period of cotangent and tangent are the same.
The domain is x such that x is not equal to n times pi, where n is any integer, but the range is from negative to positive infinity. So now we know how to graph the tangent and cotangent parent functions. Now we can modify the graphs just like we did for sine and cosine by changing the amplitude, the frequency, the period, the phase shift, and the vertical shift. In this first example, we have y is equal to the tangent of x plus pi over 4. So remember, if it's in the parentheses being added or subtracted to the angle, then that is a phase shift. And it's opposite what you would automatically think positive is going to move to the left. So we have a phase shift of negative pi over 4. So that means our graph is going to shift to the left pi over 4 radians. All right, so I'm going to mark up our graph. Okay, now that I've marked up the graph, let's figure out where the asymptotes are. The asymptote of the normal tangent function, or the asymptotes, would be at negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. So instead of it being at negative pi over 2, we have to shift it over pi over 4. So it's like we start with um, a negative pi over 2 and we're going to um, add a negative pi over 4 to it. Okay, so remember pi over 2 would be the same thing as 2 pi over 4. So that would give me a negative 3 pi over 4. So that's where my first asymptote is going to be. All right. And then the next asymptote, we know that the asymptotes happen every um, pi spaces apart. So the next asymptote would be at pi over 4. All right, and if I add pi to that, I would be at 5 pi over 4. All right, so I'm actually going to draw two, period, two periods for this. Now, the rest is the same. It's just, um, it's just shifted over. So instead of being it's shifted over uh, negative pi over 4. So instead of my 0 being at 0, it's going to be at negative pi over 4. Instead of my negative 1 being at negative pi over 4, it's shifted over to negative pi over 2. And then instead of my positive 1 value being at um, positive pi over 4, it's going to be at 0. So let me connect these to get my tangent function that's been trans transformed. Or translated okay and so I'm going to just do one more we have the negative one value the zero value and the positive one all right and so that's two periods just one of those um, sections would be a period for this graph all right let's look at another example here we have negative, or y is equal to negative 1 minus the tangent of x. So when we talk about, um, first of all, the amplitude, amplitude actually means the, the maximum and the minimum of the graph. So sine and cosine have amplitudes. Tangent and cotangents don't technically have what is called an amplitude. But we understand that in the graph of tangent and cotangent, we know we have those positive and negative one values at one and negative one. So that's what's going to change if our amplitude or if our A changes. Instead of being at positive one and negative one, it may be at positive and negative three or something like that. So um, even though this doesn't have an amplitude, if you have a value in front of the trig function, um, that's going to stretch or compress your graph. 
Now, this doesn't have a number in front of tangent, but it's got a negative, which means that it's going to reflect over the x-axis. The other thing that this graph has is a negative 1, and that is our C. And if you remember, that causes a vertical shift. So we have uh, a vertical shift of negative 1, and we have a reflection. All right, so let me mark up our graph. Okay, now that our graph is marked up, our asymptotes are going to stay the same because we don't have a phase shift. So we're going to put in our asymptotes for tangent at a positive pi over 2, negative pi over 2, Um, and I'll, I'll go ahead and do another one at 3 pi over 2. Okay, and then we know that tangent is 0 at 0, but since we have a vertical shift, it shifts our, our imaginary x-axis down to negative 1. So instead of crossing at 0, it's going to cross at negative 1. It's going to cross that y-axis at negative 1. And then at negative pi over 4, instead of it being at negative 1, we move it down one space to negative 2. And instead of at pi over 4 being at positive 1, we're going to move it down to 0. So that's going to give me my points for my tangent uh, wave. Okay, and I'm going to do one more. So this would be at negative 2 at negative 1 and at 0. Alright, now let's do some translations and transformations to the cotangent graph. Here for cotangent we have y is equal to 3 cotangent of x, which like I said that's not really called the amplitude, but it changes the um, it stretches or compresses our graph. So nothing shifts we, as far as our phase. So our phase our, or our asymptotes are going to stay in the same spot. So let me mark those up. Okay, now that I have the marks on our graph, let's put in the asymptotes. So there's no, since there's no phase shift, the asymptotes stay in the same place. And cotangent has asymptotes everywhere that y is 0 or that sine is 0. So we have an asymptote at on top of the uh, y-axis. We have one at pi and at 2 pi. All right, and then we know that um, it's every place that x is 0 or that cosine is 0 we're going to have uh, cotangent is going to also be 0, so at pi over 2 and at 3 pi over 2. And then at pi over 4, cotangent is usually positive 1, but since we have this 3 here, instead of it going to 1, it's going to go all the way up to 3. And then at 3 pi over 4, it's going to go down to negative 3. So let's draw this curve. And that would be this y is equal to 3 cotangent of x and what it would look like. All right. For 2 plus cotangent of x, that gives us a vertical shift. It's a positive 2, so we're going to shift up two spaces. Everything else stays the same. So let me mark up our graph. Okay, so like I said, all we have is the only uh, change that we have in our parent function is that we have a vertical shift of 2. So it moves our graph up two spaces. And the asymptotes stay in the same places. And for cotangent, that would be at pi and 2 pi, or every pi uh, radians. And then at pi over 2, we would normally have a point at zero.
but since it shifted up two spaces, instead of it being at zero, it's going to be at two. And then at pi over four, that would normally have a point at one, but we're gonna go up two spaces. And now in this case, so right here at three, we would have a point because we went up um, two spaces from one. And then at 3 pi over 4, instead of it being at negative 1, it's going to go up two spaces to positive 1. So that's what our graph would look like. And I'm going to go ahead and do one more curve. And that's what it would look like. Okay, let's do this last graph here. We have y is equal to cotangent of 2x minus 2 pi. So we have a phase shift and we have uh, a change in our period. Okay, so our period... Remember, we take our normal period, which in cotangent is pi and we divide it by b, which in this case is two. So our period here is going to be pi over two. And then we have a phase shift of, this says negative or minus pi, uh, two pi. Remember it's the opposite, so it's gonna be a positive two pi. So we're gonna start our first, or our our graph is going to start at 2 pi. All right, so I'm gonna mark up our graph. All right, I have it marked up. Let me show you how I got these marks. Okay, first of all, we know that the phase shift is 2 pi. So we're gonna start our graph over here at 2 pi. Um, and then our period has to happen within a space of pi over two. So 2 pi, um, let me see, 2 pi plus pi over 2, if I get a common denominator, that would be 4 pi over 2 plus pi over 2, which is 5 pi over 2. So this space right here between 2, 2 pi and 5 pi over 2, that's going to be one period. That's how we got that, okay? And then that has to be divided up into four parts. Okay, so the way that we get that, hold on a second. The way that we get our quarters or our key points is we take our phase shift, um, I mean, not our phase shift, our period, and divide that by four. All right, so we have pi over two. If we divide it by four, that's the same as multiplying by one fourth. Okay, so we get pi over eight. So that means that each mark is going to be pi over eight spaces apart. So if we start at two pi and we add pi over eight to it, we have to have a common denominator. So um, two pi would be the same thing as 16 over eight or 16 pi over eight. Um, and then we're gonna add one pi to that uh, I'm sorry, 1 pi, pi over 8 to that, and so we get 17 pi over 8. Okay, so that's where we get this 17 pi over 8 from. All right, and then if I add uh, another pi over 8 to that, so we have 17 pi over 8, and I add 1 pi over 8, I get 18 pi over over eight, which reduces to nine pi over four. Okay, that's how I got my next mark. And then the 18 pi over eight, if I add one to that, I get the 19 pi over eight, which is what I have here. And then one more would be 20 pi over eight, which reduces to five pi over two. So that's how I got those marks. And we know that on cotangent, so 
2 pi would be the same as what would, we would have at zero. So on cotangent, we know we normally have an asymptote at zero, so now we're gonna have an asymptote at two pi. And then the, at the other end of our period, we're going to have an asymptote. So at five pi over two, we're gonna have an asymptote. Right in the middle, we're gonna be at zero. And we know in the first mark that we have in between those two, that's going to be at positive one. And at the mark after zero, we're gonna be at negative one. And then we connect our dots, get close to our asymptotes, but don't cross them. And that's how we graph this um, last cotangent example.